team got me some TikTok videos that include challenges to the Christian faith. You're gonna get to witness for the first time on my YouTube channel, some of my live responses. Let's go with the first one. If I tell my wife, if you don't love me, I'm going to set you on fire. Am I a loving, good husband? If you set her on fire, then you never loved her to begin with. And if God sends us to hell, he never loved us to begin with. Wow, I admit that was a great soundbite. Mic drop moment where you think, oh my goodness, God is completely immoral. Well, first off, hell in the Bible is not about God setting us on fire. Metaphors like fire and metaphors like darkness are about loss and about judgment. So I would agree that setting a wife on fire is obviously completely immoral, but I don't think that's parallel to the biblical understanding of hell. You see, he's comparing a human relationship, what you might say is horizontal, with a vertical relationship with God. These are completely different. Now there might come a point where you separate from a spouse. Now think about it, this person completely ignores you and denies you and acts like you don't exist. At some point, many people would say, it's probably time to move on and end that relationship. Well, that's true with a spouse. Seems to me that might also be true with God. If God wants to be in a relationship with us and has reached out, and yet people keep denying and rejecting him, at some point it might make sense for this God to say, fine, you don't want to have a relationship with me. The reality is, breaking a relationship with a human being horizontally is very different than breaking a relationship with God. The very one who gives us breath, the one who gives us life, the one who makes our existence possible. So God's going to allow us to reject him, but then feel the full weight of what rejecting him relationally is actually like. Let's try another. Raise your hand if you've ever heard as a former Christian that Charles Darwin is of the devil. It's not that Christians can't be smart, it's that their ideology produces an unopened mind that sphere of hell creates thought terminating beliefs. Like, mm. Charles Darwin is of the devil, evolution is of the devil. Everything that doesn't conform to my preconceived notions about the world is of the devil. I don't actually disagree with you. There is a tendency among many Christians to do this. And we gotta stop. If Christianity is actually true, we have nothing to be afraid of by tough ideas. But with that said, since this is on Darwin and science and faith and smart Christians, I think we also have to realize that some of the smartest people who lived were not only not stifled by their faith, but it was actually a faith that encouraged them to do good science. People like Galileo and Kepler and Newton and some of the greatest scientific pioneers. If you're someone who thinks that a valid argument for God is gesturing vaguely at everything in the universe and saying, so you just think this all came from nothing? Please watch this video. I am begging you to watch right. this. The first issue with this argument is that it is a God of the gaps argument. It is a gap in human knowledge. We do not know for sure what kicked off the whole entire universe. However, historically speaking, putting God into a gap where humans lacked knowledge has been proven to not be very good for your God. Because as human knowledge expands, the gaps where you've been putting your God are getting smaller and smaller. All right, I got to admit, when I first heard this, I thought, all right, this guy is going to break bring his A game. I better brace myself because I think the beginning of the universe is one good piece of evidence for a beginner. And then he defaulted back into the same old, same old arguments that have been responded to for decades, namely God of the gaps. The argument from cosmology is not, we don't know how the universe began, therefore it must be God. That's not the argument. If Christians have made that, we need to formulate it differently. Rather, it begins with the recognition that the universe is finite. Time, matter, and space is not infinite, but finite, which raises the question, what's the best explanation? Not certain explanation, what's the best explanation for the origin of the universe? What well, can't be something physical because it sure seems that physical matter came into existence. It can't be something such as numbers, which are immaterial. It can't be nothing because literally nothing has no powers. You can't get something from no thing. So what has the powers to bring a universe into existence that's not material? That would be a timeless, spaceless, personal creator. 
So this is not a God of the gaps argument. It's actually appealing to something that we know has the causal powers to bring something like a universe into existence. Let's try another one. Over the last 10,000 years of history, there's been about 10,000 different religions and roughly about 1,000 different gods. What is the probability that Yahweh is the one true God in Amun-Ra, Aphrodite, Apollo, and the other 986 gods are all false gods? You guys are atheists just like me of all the gods I just rattled off. Some of us just go one God further. Now, this is something that I've heard many times where there's kind of this idea that atheists will appeal to Christians and say, really, you're just an atheist like me. We just go one God further as if it's not really a big deal. Just be consistent and go one God further. One way I'm not sure I totally buy this is if I thought about the difference between, say, somebody who's single and myself. If I said to somebody who's single, hey, we both reject all women, but I just have one more woman than you do. Hence, I'm married as if that's not a big distinction that would fail to understand the massive distinction between being single and between being married. But I think more germane to his point is he seems to be implying that the probability of the existence of the Christian God can be compared to all the tens of thousands of other gods. Now, if that was purely the standard, then I would agree with him that it's improbable. But it's not just Christianity versus other gods. It's actually Christianity versus all worldviews including pantheism, including atheism. So Shermer's atheistic beliefs don't get off the hook here. This changes the parameters. On its surface, then they're all equally improbable on just a numbers game. That's why we have to look at the evidence. I'm a Christian compared to all these other gods and compared to atheism or any other naturalistic worldview because I think the evidence points towards it actually being true. Let's look at another one. Is God immoral to seemingly send somebody to hell if he hasn't given him enough evidence? So notice this isn't saying that hell in principle or judgment is immoral. It's immoral if there's not enough evidence. Mm. I actually think she's onto something, but where we differ is I think God has given very good evidence from creation to the historical Jesus to the transformed lives of believers. So for those with eyes to see and ears to hear, there actually is good evidence that tells us that Christianity is true. Let's go to the next. Why do Christians always assume that their God is the only God that could exist or that they'll be safe if they believe in him and he doesn't exist? I mean, when your life ends, it could be Anubis who meets you for all we know. And he could very much feed your heart to Amit for having a false sense of superiority simply for your religious beliefs and using dumb takes like this to justify it. Then you could be wandering restlessly in Duat for all of eternity, while all the people you did in hell experienced paradise in Nauru because they weren't self-righteous with dumb takes. And like I said, no one deserves eternal torture simply for not believing in or obeying a particular god. And any god who thinks so is a cruel narcissist who is not deserving of worship. All right, so the question of hell aside, that would take a little bit more time to unpack. One thing I sense is that she is turned off by a lot of self-righteous Christians. And let me tell you, many times as we as Christians can be self-righteous. So when I see a video like this, this is a pause and reminder to me that Jesus criticized those who are self-righteous and to try to not be that person. Now, with that said, it's not that Christians say Christianity is the only possible religion that can be true. It's not about possibility. I'm happy to concede that I could be wrong. I give a talk on truth and I make the point at the end, I say all religions could be false, but they can't possibly all be true. Christianity could be false. So Christians should not act like it's not possible that we're mistaken. The question is not possibility. The question is probability. So I don't see any good evidence that Anubis or these other gods are actually real or I would believe in them. But I see very good evidence that Jesus claimed to be God and did miracles and rose on the third day. Thus, if that is true, his words and teachings about eternal life, including hell, are things I think we ought to take seriously. Let's just not be self-righteous about it. Good reminder from her. Hey, thanks for watching. This is totally an experiment. The first time we've done this rolling straight through with all the videos. Let us know what you think in the comments. If you want me to do more of this on the channel, if you have ideas to do it better, 
We're trying new stuff out here to try to serve you. So let us know what you think.